Hello guys and welcome back to another building tutorial for that tower. So today what we're going to do is we're going to work on one new block for allowing pillagers and other things to spawn. And then what we're going to do is we're going to finish decorating the last uh, three sections of the actual tower. So I have the workspace all set up. We just need to create the texture now. I'm not actually going to have any texture for this particular block now because um, I don't want it to be visible for anyone to actually see, but I want it to be replaceable so it can basically um, replace the block and do it a number of other things. Now, um, we could do this a few different ways. Now, we could actually build this into the structure, but this would technically have to be through script and stuff we're still gonna have to do it through script but the easiest way to get this to actually work is just to basically add a few spawner blocks uh, that are invisible and that will um, kind of be hidden from the player um, obviously if you wanted to integrate something into the structure itself you could do that as well you could texture like a couple different blocks that look very similar to the vanilla ones but uh, the easiest way and the most safest way for non-copyright issues from Mojang is just to make an invisible texture so that's what we're going to do we're going to set the canvas size for in paint.net to 16 by 16 and then we're going to just make sure that center and then we're going to zoom in using the zoom tool and then we're just going to hit Control a to select everything and then delete to delete it all uh, the delete is right under the insert key um, and next to the end key on your keyboard. After we've done that, we can just save the texture and we're going to save that to our desktop. I'll put it in the tower resources um, as well. And we'll say something like uh, pillager uh, spawner. And then we want to make sure that it's a PNG image and then we're going to save that to our desktop. So now we have our texture done. All we need to do is make the spawner in mCreator. So we need to actually import the resource, import texture, and then we're going to select block texture. And then what we're going to do is go to our desktop. And then we're going to select our texture that we just created. It should come up right here. And then all we need to do is create a block for it. So we're going to create block. And then what we're going to do is we're going to call it uh, pillager spawner and then we're going to create new block we're going to just use a single texture so we want um, this one right here select our invisible texture here it might be a little bit hard to find because it is invisible and then we want to basically have this on cutout because we're going to change the actually we want this on transparent so what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that it's invisible completely where it's not going to actually go through any blocks and people won't be able to see anything with the actual structure and stuff. Uh, we also want to make sure that it is uh, water water loggable as well. So we're going to select these two blocks here. So if it basically place water down, it will basically act like a fluid source and um, it'll just work a little bit better when it's actually connected like that. And then what we want to do is all this other settings are perfectly fine the way it is. We can just move on to the bounding box. Now I don't want the bounding box to be too big. I'm going to actually set this to about, oh, let's see here, 16. We'll do like maybe 4, 4, 4, and then we'll subtract that by 12. Actually, let's do 5, 5, 5, and 5, and then we'll do... 11, 11, and 11. That should be a small enough size for still being able to see where the hitbox is, but being able to break it. Uh, the next thing that we want to do is we want to set the properties. What I'm going to actually do is I'm going to set the properties for this to be something replaceable. So we need to find something that is. Um, air blocks are replaceable, so we can actually use that. And then what we want to do is we want to basically set up uh, the creative tab inventory. So what I'm going to do is we don't have one. So I'm going to just set transportation. I think that's where we've been. Actually, no, we, we have been putting it under building blocks, haven't we? OK, so we'll put it under decorations. And then we want the hardness and resistance to be zero. 
We also want it to not drop itself and the preferred tool should be probably um, just use a pickaxe and then we'll set that the, the hardness to zero. Uh, we want it to be replaceable so when a player places a block down we want to make sure that it um, basically vanishes and uh, light up Capacity. We want to make sure that this is set to zero. So what we're going to do is we're going to set that to zero. I'm just going to make sure that it, it basically is zero by increasing the number and then decreasing after setting it. And that will zero basically allow all light to, to go through it. So we want to make sure that happens or it's going to be a solid block and we don't want that. Uh, can walk through block. We want to also make sure this is checked so players and other entities can go through the block like normal. And uh, for the sound, uh, we probably want something, I'm not sure what spawners are. I think they're glass. So we'll use glass for this one. And you could also set different custom sounds like that or select custom ones from the uh, vanilla sound directory as well if you wanted to mix and match some. So that one's fine. Uh, this one we're, I'm going to do is set the block uh, color on the map to air. This will basically allow other blocks to have priority over the color and stuff. So we want to make sure that one's like that. For the tick rate, I am going to leave it at, actually let's set it to random. Then we can basically have it randomly generate like similar to regular spawners and stuff like that. Uh, for the AI path, uh, we want to make sure that it is open so entities can walk through it. And for the uh, reaction to being pushed by a piston, we want to basically just have it uh, destroyed and then that will basically not basically drop it wherever it is. Well, it won't drop it because we've disabled drops. Uh, block inventory, now we're using it through the um, random tick but we want might want to increase the delay we can do that through either MBT or we can do that through um, random numbers so we could random make a random number and generate it so if we're going to do the random number instead and just avoid a tile entity so if energy and fluid storage we don't need anything like that uh, triggers what we're going to do is we're actually going to go for update tick now that the update tick will be random uh, based on the game tick. So if we speed up the game, the more pillagers will spawn. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually create a new local variable and I'm going to call this local or pardon me, random, random, and then we're going to set that to a number variable. And then what we want to do is we want to go to the flow control, grab an if statement, then we want to go to logic, grab a not statement or not, not operator, and then what we want to do is we want to grab the client side only block, and this will make sure that the repeater only runs on server side, which is important, or it will run twice. So what we want to do is now grab a if statement, and we're going to grab a local variable thing under the custom variables, and we're going to go to math, and we're going to set this to a random number, and then what we want to do is go to logic and then grab a dark blue operator. And then what we're going to do is we're going to set this to equal to or greater than. And then we need a number to basically test for that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this to a very high number. So something like um, 0 0.95. Now the number should be between 1 and 0. So any point form between that. Uh, any decimals up to the third decimal point you can use. So uh, this being one and five or between one and zero is uh, basically a 95% chance uh, or pardon me, a 5% chance that the entity will spawn because it is equal to or greater than. So it's uh, anything above 0 0.95. So that's a 5% extra to, in order to make it one. So that's basically what it is. Now we want to get the local variable that we just basically assigned and we want to make sure that it's testing is e the local variable equal to 0 0.95 or greater than. And then what we want to do is actually spawn our entities. So we're going to go to world management 
and then what we're going to do is we're going to scroll down until we can see a couple of these blocks so we want this one right here and then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and uh, not that block we want to go to the math and then we'll grab a math operator and we want to offset the x and z coordinates so it's centered to the block so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this 0 0.5 I don't actually need two of them I can just duplicate this one and then we can basically just add our z and x coordinates to here and for yaw and pitch we don't really need to customize this you could technically go ahead and make a little bit more advanced script but I think I'll leave that for another tutorial and we want to basically scroll down until we see pillager and that's what we're going to be spawning as a pillager uh, we might want to throw some vindicators in as well so we'll throw a couple vindicators in uh, where are pillagers so pillagers elemental p a little bit higher up uh, pillager so we want that one now we might also want to create a random thing between a vindicator and pillager so what I'm going to do is create another random number and then I'm going to basically just duplicate this delete the one inside and then what we're going to do is we're going to set this to something like 0 0.66 and then we're going to do an else statement at the bottom we can click on the gear icon for that and we're going to spawn a pillager that is 66% um, or less, uh, between 66% for actually spawning pillager. And the other 33%, what we're going to do is we're going to spawn a vindicator. So vindicators are under V, so we'll just make sure that it's that one. Okay, so that's all set up. That's all the script that we need. And I'm just going to save that and then it's going to run its thing when it's generated. So we don't actually need any generation conditions. We're going to be using it as a building block instead. So we can just click save and then we should have our block here and our procedure. So once we've done that, we can actually add it to our structure. Let's go in game and then we'll start working on the actual um, build in game I just want to make sure that this actually works so what we want to do is we want to go to our game options set it to at least easy because these are hostile mobs so they won't spawn on peaceful and then we want to go back to the game and then we're going to go under decorations scroll down and there should be an empty spot right down here because it's an empty block so we don't actually see it we're going to just put that on to our hotbar one and I am going to just place it until I can hear it not sure where it went hitbox isn't really around might have went a little bit over on the actual hitbox size okay so it should be right right there but it's not coming up so we'll just uh, sit around and we'll wait for something to spawn and I'll pop back in later on and check to see if anything has spawned here so let's go into the tower and we'll work on the uh, few things in the tower itself and we'll see if we can't get uh, the next three floors done and hopefully within that period of time we can actually get uh, a couple pillagers or something spawning over there so this floor is pretty much good I want to keep the first two floors a little bit empty uh, we'll put some spawners on these ones at least and for these ones I want to decorate a little bit more so not sure if those are going to spawn. We'll see if they do. It might be a little bit too rare. If we it is rare, then we can adjust the um, the the script a little bit. All right. So I'm going to actually use some redstone dust because redstone dust is really good for indicating there's some blood and stuff like that. And we're going to put like a workshop or something up here. Um, not sure what kind of workshop, but we'll do something and we might want to add a couple cages or something so let's remove some of this and we can remove that a little bit and what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring that out put some villagers or something in here and we'll do that for each corner Okay, 
So basically that, and then what we want to do is kind of increase this level up a little bit. Um, we might want to use one of those custom staircases. Not sure if we have one somewhere around here. Should be that one. Something like that maybe. And we'll do the other side in a little bit. And then what I'm going to do is use, um, yeah, I'm not sure if, uh, we'll use some cage blocks, I guess. It should work out fine. Yeah, that works out really good. Okay, so we'll do double this up a little bit. So it's like that. And then what we'll do is we will go ahead and spawn a villager in here. Now, is there anything spawning out there? don't see anything spawning so we might have to um, adjust the level all right so we want a villager and I'm going to place him right inside like ah. that and then I'm going to ah. go like that and just fill this up like that ah. and we might want a lamp or something in there as well so ah. no entity spawn uh, like zombies and stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go oh. ahead and oh, we can use a um, lantern, oh. I guess. That should be fine. It is a block. So put that there. Put that like that. Oh. So there we go. And then what we want to do is we want to do that for the other corner. So I'll quickly do that and then we can um, set up some other things around here just to kind of test some stuff out like uh, maybe a work, yeah. work spot or torture chamber or something like that for villagers so let's do that yeah. and I'll cut back in once uh, we got the, the
got the tower done for the interior. We just need to add the spawners and stuff like that. So we'll do that in just a second, but uh, I wanted to just do a quick showcase of what we've done. So this is the top floor. Uh, we'll have some loot tables and stuff up here. Uh, we'll do that in just a couple moments, but probably next episode uh, we'll work on the loot tables and creating the structures and stuff like that. Uh, we will put the spawners in today though. And um, yeah, so down here is the library. This is the uh, first floor from the roof. So different libraries, mushrooms and stuff like that. We worked on that last uh, episode. Uh, down here is the brewing room. So a lot of more purples and magics and stuff like that. Uh, this is the kind of like the barracks for the pillagers and vindicators. Down here is the kind of like the, I don't know, resource storage thing. You'll have the uh, emerald blocks. I imagine they pillage and take those. And for the bones, that kind of ties into the torture chamber down below where there is uh, some chairs and stuff they can saw up villagers and stuff with so i don't know i was just running out of ideas and then these last two floors are just empty um i didn't add anything to them uh just because i wanted them kind of empty to begin with uh now one of the things that i did notice was the wherever that spawner ended up being uh nothing's spawning so i think i know why that's happening uh it's because it's um in a world that is considered a void so we'll try uh, going into a regular world and I'll um, see if it's actually spawning. If not, then it might be too high. So let's uh, do that quickly. We'll just create a new world. Uh, it doesn't have to be anything. We'll just go into creative though. I will have it on normal and we'll just create a new world with that. And then we'll place down a spawner block and we'll see if anything spawns around. So. Let's take a couple seconds and then we'll go to our decoration scroll all the way down there should be there we'll place that there and we'll see if anything spawns now I'll just wait a little bit and see if anything does spawn if it does then I'll cut back in if not then I'll cut back in with the um, uh, editor and then we'll take a look at some of the settings so I just literally stood here for a little bit and uh, not too long, just a couple seconds ago, um, one of these guys spawned. So it is the type of the world that I do have it in. Um, it's because it's technically a void and it's above a certain level. So I think that's re the reason why they weren't spawning. So this should work in theory. So I'm going to go ahead with... Um, doing some stuff now i noticed that the hitbox wasn't big enough so what i'm going to do is i'm going to um decrease this by we'll say four and then we'll set this to 12 and hopefully that will be big enough for the hitbox actually let's do three 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 and 13 13 and 13 so that should be a big enough hitbox for that and then we'll be able to actually see where it is so we'll go back into the test environment after this is set up and then we'll place down some spawners so let's just quickly turn this to uh, peaceful so none of them does spawn and then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll set up the spawners for location i'm not sure if they're big enough now so still not seeing a hitbox uh, we can go here and we can just replace that okay so i want at least um a few of them out here though uh because there should be quite a few resistance when you go ahead and try to attack so we'll have a couple spawners out here one or two over here and then we'll put some more inside so maybe two per floor now these are replaceable meaning that it will act like plants uh, like grass and stuff when um, you go and you basically place a block in its place it will replace it with um, 
some with the other block so that's basically how that works uh with the replaceable feature so i'm actually going to put one right here i'm not sure where that will spawn in but it'll be interesting and then we'll do it put uh some over by the emeralds i think those will be kind of a more priority so we'll put a couple over there and there and then we'll go up to this floor and i think by the beds would be probably good so we'll put like one or two on each one so here and here here and here and another one there and then for the brewing we'll put some by the brewing stands um put one there put one there put another one there and another one there perfect and then what we'll do is we'll go up to the next floor library and i think uh we could probably put a couple of them over now the reason why i'm putting more on each floor is it will be a little bit more difficult as the player progresses up the floors and stuff so that's the reason why i'm putting them up here and we'll go up to the next one and this is where the loot will be so we want to kind of make sure that there is enough resistance around these chests and that should give us a little bit of a harder time to defend the area so that should be good uh for spawner wise now i know you can't actually see them but uh they're there trust me and um when this actually does spawn in the overworld, it will be pretty hard to actually get to the top of the tower unless you have the elytra. And then if you do get up there, then there'll probably be already things spawning up there. But uh, let's uh, just do a quick look around. Uh, now, I'm not sure about what to put out here. Um, figure I'll just leave it as the square. Uh, we might even replace the grass with... Um, some oh what do you call it the uh now is this one chunk or is it a 32 by 32 i can't remember okay, this is a 32 by 32 so it's going to be a little bit of a bigger structure to work with uh, we're going to have to preload these chunks i think um when the structure does spawn in so we can get make sure that the whole tower gets properly loaded in because it uses multiple chunks uh, we can use file manager for that uh, that won't be an issue but um, yeah outside of that that's all the time that I have for today uh, we got the decoration done we just need to get the loot table in and then we have to make the structures uh, there is I think a few different levels probably one two two sections that we have to work on so we'll have to make two parts for this actual structure and then we have to work on the um the generation making sure the chunks are all preloaded and stuff like that when it does spawn in and then we'll probably replace the grass with something like a um i don't know a structure voids or something like that uh we might also replace uh some of the blocks around actually no we probably won't do that it's too late to do that but um, yeah, so that if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe. We'll definitely work on this next episode and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.